I have to show you this video that I just cannot stop watching. It's so precious. It's this little girl named Layla from Florida telling her mom how her classmate criticized her, but how she held her own. She's gonna criticize her about her hair. Y'all check this out. Almond didn't like my hair, but I said I like it. Good. <laughs> so what did he say? He said, I don't like that hair, it's crazy. And, and I said, my mommy made it. If you, do, if you don't like it, I'll keep it for myself. Good girl, Dolly. <laughs> oh, baby, I'm so proud of you. You stood up for yourself. That's what matters. What matters is that you like it. It's your hair. Just melt your entire heart. She is the sweetest and the cutest little thing in the whole wide world. Oh God, I want to see her beautiful smile and her fierce hair in person. Yeah, Layla's gonna come in the next two weeks to the show. I wanna know what she, she gonna wear her hair, baby. I gotta meet her, okay? I think we all can learn a little something about confidence from her, right? I cannot wait to meet her. And y'all, and a little bit later in the show, I wanna talk about hair, okay? So. We got uh, my special hairdresser coming out here. He gonna do a special edition on out with the old and in with the new, okay? Cause we could get rid of some things. And we gonna hear some great tips. Cause I got some hair questions of my own and I'm sure you do too. So we gonna, we gonna learn some things. But until then, I wanna introduce my first guest. He's played Dr. Richard Weber for nearly 20 years on the hit ABC show, Grey's Anatomy. Y'all please welcome James Pickens Jr. Y'all love him. to say, I love his hat. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You tipped on out here with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And first of all, thank you so much for being well, thank here. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure. Wow. Thank you. And congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much, we appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, I wanna learn so many things from you, because oh. I wanna have longevity in oh. this industry, and I know you know how it goes. Uh -huh. So I have to start off by asking you, like, how did you get started into acting? Oh, the long, the, the short story of it, I, I never intended on doing this. Really? Somebody had to told me I would have been here at this time 40 some odd years ago, whatever it was, I would have told them they were crazy. I was trained to be an artist. I wanted to be a cartoonist and an illustrator. And uh, wow. as fate would have it, as it, it often does, uh, I happened to be, a, it was my senior year in college. There was a gentleman there who was working on his doctorate in directing and he was directing a play. And he was minus one actor. He couldn't find anybody to do it. And we happened to be in the same place at the same time, had a mutual friend. He was telling her his dilemma. He happened to peruse across the student union. There may have been 500 people in mm. there at lunchtime. And she said, why don't you ask Jim? He came over and introduced himself, told me what he was doing. I was very reticent. You know, nobody in my family had ever been involved in the creative arts anyway. But he was very convincing and uh, he said, "Can." I think you could do this. I mean, it's a nice play. It's only for a weekend in college. You know, those runs are usually just a weekend. So uh, I never forget the play. It was called Matters of Choice. So I said, okay. And I did it, and uh, I got the bug, and uh, as they say, uh, the rest is <laughs> the history. The rest is history. Yeah. Talk well. about getting the bug. That is amazing. I mean, that means it was destined. It was meant to yeah, be, would you yeah, say? Yeah, I, I, I had no say in it after that. Yeah, oh but it's, it's, been, it's been a blast. And speaking of mutual friends, I heard that back in New York, you were in a play with Samuel L. Jackson and Denzel Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was that yeah. like? Do y'all yeah. see this picture? Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, wow. That's a long time ago. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, actually I got my equity card from this show with the uh, prestigious Negro Ensemble Company. It was a soldier's play. It went on to win just about every critical award there was. It won the Pulitzer Prize for theater that year and we were just getting started myself, Sam, Denzel, and uh, 
it kind of helped to kind of launch our careers from there. And uh, it was one of the high points of my life. So y'all were legends starting out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, that is really fascinating to me. Well, that is awesome to see. You. Are you guys still close? Still close, yeah. They're probably two of my dearest friends. Our kids almost literally grew up together. And, and we, we talk when we can, and we kind of stay in touch and see how everybody's doing. But yeah, they're, they're, they're dear friends of mine. They're, you know, ride or die cats. Yeah, Man, for sure. I can't help but to wonder, who better to ask? So you know how you start out when you're young and everybody have a vision of what they're going to do? Did all y'all discuss back then, like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that because you're all legends? Well, I think we were just glad to have a job, you know, <laughs> uh, especially back then doing theater and stuff. And you, you have dreams and aspirations, yeah. obviously. I don't think we really talked about them that much. I mean, we were so focused on doing the work and, and hopefully perpetuating the careers as they went along. So, and every once in a while, you know, I may talk to Sam or, and uh, say, man, you know, do you think this would happen like this? And, you know, we kind of say, well, yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a heck of a ride. Amazing icons. Oh, oh my goodness. And you're celebrating your 40th anniversary with your wife. Cele celebrating my 40th wedding anniversary, May 27th. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. How did you guys meet? How did we meet? I met her in New York, but she was from my hometown. I'm originally from Cleveland. She was from Cleveland, but I didn't know her there. Really? So I go to New York to meet a Cleveland girl. <laughs> and uh, she, was, she was in the business as well. Uh, she was actually was a, a singer, and she was on Broadway. She did Dream Girls and Beehive and Lead of the Pack. And she was part of the whole disco era thing. She was with a group called Musique. They had a big hit back in the late 70s called Push, Push in the Bush. Mm. <laughs> Y'all know that one. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, and uh, you know, here we are, uh, 40, years, 40 years later. I, I didn't think anybody could be with me for 40 minutes. <laughs> 40, 40 years, but it's been a heck of a ride. So. Beautiful. Thank Congratulations you. to you that. Much. That is Appreciate awesome. You. Thank you. You got the key. Because <laughs> it's, was it 20 years into Grey's Anatomy? 20 seasons. This will be 20 seasons. 20 seasons. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank oh, you. my God. What is the new season like? What is it about? Oh, uh, well, you know, we got to keep Ziploc uh -huh. bags on that. But we thought we'd uh, try. What I can tell you is that we, we, we would leave, we come back to where we left off during at, at season 19, right before all the strike craziness and right. everything happened. But we'll, we'll hit the ground running. I think the audiences are going to be very excited with what they see. We got a new crop of interns who I'm really excited about, really talented young act actors and stuff. And I think they will keep that momentum and, and that storytelling alive. It's going to be a lot of fun. We can't wait yeah. to see, that's thank for you. sure. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my goodness. And then you had a mini Grey's Anatomy reunion at the Emmys. Oh, yeah, we had one, and uh, myself, and. Ellen Pompeo and Sandra mm -hmm. Wilson, and they, they got Katie Heigl back and Justin Chambers. And it was like a mini reunion. We had a blast. We presented in the category for Best Supporting Actor in an anthology or a movie. And it was a lot of fun being with them again, yeah, mm. for sure. That's amazing. Will you stick around for a little bit? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So happy to have you. More with James. We'll be right back. We're back with Grey's Anatomy star James Pickens Jr. Yeah, you sit, take your time. Sip, thank you. That's right. Okay, so you play a doctor on the TV, but I hear in real life you're a cowboy, and this is like, this is like a classic cowboy hat, is it? Yeah, this is Resisto, yeah, and uh, yeah. It's sharp. I, I've, uh, I've enjoyed the cowboy and Western lifestyle for a long time. I mean, I'm a city boy, but yeah, I've had a lot of fun with it. Really? How did you get into it? Oh, yeah, I'm a child of the 50s, you know, and grew up watching all the westerns with my dad and my brother. You know, when you only had three channels and you had to turn, <laughs> you were the remote control. You had to go turn it. And every channel at that point may have had 20 westerns on. And you, really? we'd watch them all. And a horse was always my favorite animal. And when I was in New York City, you know, as a stage actor, I would ride in Central Park. And, uh, or up in City Island, up in the Bronx. And then, you know, when I got to California and hooked up with some stuntmen and wranglers and stuff. And yeah, Look you know, it, uh, yeah, it was, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a blast. How many horses do you have? I've got three horses. I've got a, an old retired guy, Reno. And that one there, that's Moose right there. Aww. And then the other one you saw me ride on, that's Tux, that's short for Tuxedo. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Tuxedo, that yeah. sounds fancy. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, 
I'm, I'm learning new things. I always say you will always see me try, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I wanna, can you teach me some things? Well, let's see what we can do. Okay, you know? I think you'll be a great teacher right. in actually, this. Actually, I got you a little. I need yeah. my hat. This, this how I put it on? Right, there Is you it go. this way? That's it, that's it. Okay, I wanna learn. I got my good hat on. Oh, wow. Okay. She's got a hat on. What's that? Okay. Now this is, some folks call this a lasso, a, a lariat, whatever you want to call it, but you know this is probably one of the main tools that cowboys use to, to do what they need to do, obviously, to catch something out on the, the plane uh, when they're out there ranching and stuff. So get the rope. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going to help it. you right here. Okay, turn this way. Come on over here. Okay. This is serious, y'all. Ah, I'm like that. <laughs> it's just serious. You just really swing that thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now get close. I'm gonna get close. Okay. And I'm gonna help. Okay, yes. Ready help. here. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. There. We got him. Ah. We got him. Hold on. We got him. Give me five. <laughs> we did him. that. Did I that. wanna learn more. Okay. okay. Thank you for being. James season 20 of Grey's Anatomy premieres Thursday, March 14th at 6 p.m. on ABC. We'll be right back. Where my head at? Welcome back. It's March and spring is right around the corner, so it's time to get started with our spring cleaning. We all tend to keep things past the prime, especially beauty products. So today we're gonna freshen up in our segments, out with the old and in with the new hair edition. Hmm. I figured I could use a little help for um, an expert, and I know just the man for the job. Come on out here, Robert. We gonna get some good tips right here. Let's okay. do it. So Robert, tell yes. everyone what it is you do on the show. I'm Robert, and I do hair. It's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> And it rhymes. Okay, that was amazing. <laughs> now you know just how to revive our hair care routines. Will you help us out with some things? Yeah, of course, let's do it. All right. Anything you need. Where is Crystal? Come on down. Hi, welcome. Hi, Crystal, you got your good stuff. Okay, come on in. So you sit this right here. You brought everything out brought, the house, huh? The goods, oh, the Lord. Goods. That's wonderful. <laughs> Can you tell us, what yeah. do you do, actually? I, um, I'm actually a business owner. I have a business providing consulting services specifically for nonprofit organizations. Nice. Yeah. You're beautiful. <laughs> so Thank gorgeous. you. Thank you. Okay, wh what do you have here? What do you need help with? Uh, these are vintage. So uh, I love that vintage. <laughs> How vintage are they? Uh, this is about nine years old. So my curling iron is very special. You have to click the on button about seven times. But I've got it down now. I've got it all figured out. You didn't think after the second, third time you should ask the door? I just kept going. I just kept going until it turned on, and I, we found the sweet spot. Oh, I see your face, Robert. What do you have? Well, you have a problem is what you have, first of all, because <laughs> And it's like if your car takes seven times to start, you might want to get your car serviced, right? So yeah, it's time for a new one. Definitely yes, time yes. for a new one. And, and what is this one here? Oh, this beauty right here. I mean, so do we time? all remember the wet to straight oh, um, straighteners? I do very well. <laughs> but listen, I am a mom. I'm short on time. If it's a little damp and it sizzles a little bit, you know, we just gotta go. We have places to be. That's <laughs> the thing. Kill two birds with one stone, right? <laughs> and, and the reason she says sizzle is because it literally, while your hair is damp, it was an ideal situation or idea that it pushes the moisture out while it's drying at the same time. So you eliminate one whole process in the blow dry of your hair. You don't need to blow dry anymore. You just flat iron it and it'll dry it and straighten it. But because of the sizzle, if any, you should only be sizzling in the kitchen and the bedroom. 
Those are the only two places you should sizzle. That means that it was taking out the moisture too quick. It was pushing the water out so fast that it was creating dryness to your hair. So again, we're trying to avoid any further damage to your hair. So I would say get rid of both of those. I would love to. Yeah, Thank sorry. You. <laughs> Because that sizzle, that sounds like something's on fire. It does. The sizzle's never good. Yeah. Kitchen and bedroom only. Okay. <laughs> He's serious about that. <laughs> what about heat damage? Like, what can you do for heat damage? Well, for heat damage, what I suggest anyone, your iron should not be higher than 350 degrees. And that's high. Mm -hmm. So what you do once you're at 350, if you have color in your hair, subtract 50 from that. If you have bleach in your hair, subtract 50 from that. If you have a relaxer in your hair, subtract 50 from that. So that way you know you're gonna pretty be, be down to about 200, 225. So that way you keep lowering according to how many chemicals are in your hair, and that'll help you prevent excessive heat damage. Okay, because if, if we use the 50, then we may burn our hair out. Yeah, and some of them have up to 450 degrees on there, but that's only designed that? for keratin straighteners. Okay. So if you're getting like a Brazilian straightening, a keratin straightening, it needs to be 450. That's why they're making all the irons with 450. That doesn't mean take it to 450, because you will have no more hair left. I was just about yeah. to say that. I think it goes kind of high, that one. It, it How does. high does yours go? I think it has a number. Let's see. Can you still see the numbers on it? Right, that <laughs> Oh, no. You know, it has numbers. I don't know what they mean, though. So <laughs> who really knows? Yeah. It goes to 30. Oh, is there an expiration date for when they get rid of these? Not like products, but the manufacturer's suggested like warranties are usually one to three years. After that, if you start seeing your <laughs> iron seven times to turn on, nice. that's your expiration date, right? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take rocket science here, but there is no expiration. But if it doesn't get hot like it used to, that's an indication that the motor is burning out. Blow dryers are the first to go. If you start hearing it sound different or all of a sudden it just starts smoking, that's the first thing that happens. If your hair dryer, dryer starts smoking, you better get rid of it. Right, <laughs> right. Oh so. no, we don't want any parts of <laughs> no. that. Okay, I got two questions. I don't know about sure. you, Crystal, but this is gonna help all of us. Um, how do you clean the curling Oh, iron? that's a good question because first of all, they should be clean. Like anything you need to sanitize, uh -huh. especially if you're sharing it with more than one person in the household, but then you do get build up on there. So what I did is I brought up what was previously a, a hot iron. I had it plugged in before I came out. So right now I can actually touch it, but it's warming. So while it's cooling down, but it's still warm, that's when I would suggest taking just regular rubbing alcohol and you just spray it on here. And you'll see it might smoke a little because it's still warm, but the alcohol alone and it being warm, when you start to rub all this, look at the gunk that just came off of there. Mm, okay. Can you guys see that? Yes. So if you just keep doing that, that is the easiest and fastest hack. Look at that, it just keeps coming off on the cloth. Yeah. So quick, easy rubbing alcohol while your tool is warm. And you should be able to tap it, touch it like I did, but you still need it to be somewhat warm and that's what's gonna help get all that gunk off of your plate. Look at that. We see it. So that keeps getting back onto your hair. So you're not helping the hair in the process. So. And then is this after every time you do your hair or is this once a week not, or how Not often? every time. I would just say make it a regimen, like maybe once a week, once a month. Just depends on the usage. So if you use it a lot, clean it a lot. If you don't use it a lot, don't clean it a lot. Well, she used hers a lot. Hers have been used <laughs> to no end, honey. They need a funeral service. But your hair cute, girl. Period. You're and if you dead, she be buried, you're right? Cute. Yes. Okay. I got, I got, you got any more questions? Because I'm asking other questions, but I got one more question. Hit okay. me, hit me while now, I'm here. Now, I know we all have different, you know, products, hair stuff, but what happened, what you supposed to do when you lose the top? Something oh, like this one. You see, frustrated, and it go away and it's right? still full and you can't get your product up. That is there. a great question, Jennifer. So the old school bottles, this just can come right off, right? These come off. Mm -hmm. I would actually take them off and run hot water because sometimes all the product, you can see it's kind of orange in there mm. from the spray. The water will start to break it up. And then I just take like any sharp object, I'll use the back of my rat tail comb and I'll just go in there and it peels right off and it comes right out. When you put it back on after you run the hot water on it, it sprays again like brand new. The problem with the newer bottles is that they now have a, a more modern design to it, so that way it protects the ozone layer from you know the, all the pollutants and everything. So now, if these were to break off, it's hard for you to replace it these. It annoys myself. And, but you can't take them back with your receipt because they know that's an issue. If it's half a bottle or more, they should be able to return really? it. Yeah, oh. because I've broken so many brand new bottles, and man, 
Because these aren't cheap at all. It drives me nuts. That's why yeah. I had to ask that question. Of course. Okay. So, yeah, these are easier to clean. These, if they break and the top falls off, just return them back. Okay. So good to know. That sounds amazing. Okay, Crystal. You ready to get rid of the vintage? I would love to. I know vintage is in, but I think it's, they got to <laughs> yeah. go. Okay, okay. You want yeah. me to do the honors? You, you, you take Should one and I take one. Should we do one together? Okay, yes, because we're going to bury this, honey. <laughs> let's have a moment of silence. A moment please. of silence. Here we go. Oh, yes! So good. Yes! Ah! the old and in with the new crystal. Yes. I want to give you a brand new shark flex style hair tool. Come on out. Oh, just oh for you. My goodness. Shut up. Is that how old the you are? Yay! You're so cute. Oh. We did that. Girl, those we are amazing. So Enjoy them, Chrissy. Okay, you see promise that's to take the, good care of it, Girl, too. that's like $350 value here. Oh and you can gosh. adjust it. You have different nozzles. You amazing. cannot... Keep it like you did those. I will. I promise. This is going to change your life. I promise. <laughs> so, because of J Hud changed your life, free stuff, free oh everything. New year, new you. You like it? Give me five. <laughs> did y'all learn a lot today? Thank you, Will Bear. Thank, Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Thank there you go, girl. Okay, for our more helpful hair tips, head to JenniferHudsonShow.com. We'll be right back. Our next guest is the highest ranked nine-year-old fencer in the U.S. and reigning four-time junior Olympic gold medalist. From Orlando, Florida, please welcome Ariana Joy. Come on out. We have Tom Cookie. Hi. Whoa. Thank you for being here. Now, how long have you been fencing? I started since I was seven, so a little bit over two years. Wow. How did you get into it? Um, like, it was during summer, so my mom uh -huh. was, like, searching for, like, Things summer for you to camps do? and yeah. stuff. And she came across fencing, because oh she never heard of it before. So, uh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you got all these gold medals. How did you get so good? Practicing. Practicing? <laughs> okay. Well, I... We all would love to see you in action. So I got a little friend, his name is Walter. Walter! Come on out here, friend! Oh! Woo! He's nervous. He like, oh my God, I gotta fight a medalist. Okay, so what are the basic fencing rules? The basic fencing rules is, you know, this is at bay, and you can only score on the tip of the blade. Mm -hmm. And the first person to get to five points is the winner, and you can hit anywhere on the body. But Ariana, you gonna go easy on my friend, or you gonna get him good? Mm. <laughs> she like, he don't stand a chance. Okay, so what's the first thing Walter should learn? How to wipe away his tears. <laughs> you, you hit, he, friend? <laughs> she said how to wipe away his <laughs> I did not see that coming. Did that make you any more nervous, friend? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I think it's time for us to start the bout. I need to see this. Good luck, friend. <laughs> Ready, fencers, on guard. Ready, fence. One zero on guard. Ready, fence. Uh oh, she quick. You messed oh, with a medalist. Halt, 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 halt. Two zero. Gonna get us a point or something. Get the knee or something, the foot. Whoa! Oh, uh halt. -oh. uh oh, what happened? Touch right again. Scores three zero. Lord, we still ain't got no points. Okay. Uh oh, he tried. Oh. Oh, okay. oh. Again, touch right. Man, she Four you, zero. She gets you so quick, you don't even know you got got. <laughs> Come on, do something. Oh, oh, that was close. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Oh, she whipped him. That's the bell. She whipped him. Touch, touch blades. I didn't get a point. Touch, you didn't get a point. <laughs> I didn't get a point. You never what? do. Shake hands. <laughs> 
Shake hands. I mean, you're working. Right. But you're still alive. You're still alive. You're working with an amazing medalist. You want her hair. And Ariana, I mean, you can't mess with that. Yes. That was amazing. One day, I think I could try it. You think I could try it? One, not today, though, OK? <laughs> I, I'm, uh -huh. on, I'm on. But you know what? I had to get you a little something. OK, I got you a Jennifer Bedazzled helmet oh. and sword as a keepsake, OK? Now, don't whip my friend too bad with it, but this is for you, all right? OK, y'all keep an eye out on Ariana. You going to see her at the Olympics one day again and again and again. We are proud of you. Keep up the great work. Sorry, friend, but you did all right. We'll be right back. Our next guest is the founder of Curls on the Block, a program building self-esteem for young black girls from West Covina, California. Please welcome Annalise Harris. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the invitation and opportunity. First of all, your hair is gorgeous. Well, you know, I had a little help, but thank you. <laughs> it's really, really nice. It reminds me of my son's texture of hair. So this is why this is so intriguing to me. Can you tell us what Curls on the Block is? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I can relate to the curly girl stories and mm -hmm. curly guys. So I appreciate the opportunity to share what Curls on a Block is, mm -hmm. an after school and enrichment program for girls of all curls and color to embrace, explore and empower their natural selves using beauty to connect with steam. Mm, OK, that is amazing. <laughs> Beautiful girls, by the way. Can you explain how steam is how it it's incorporated within a program and how it's used with hair. Well, STEAM actually is an acronym mm -hmm. and it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. And those are typically the subjects that uh, a lot of children and kids avoid, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially young black girls who are struggling to just show up to school and be their full selves. Right. And I recognized a gap. I recognized that they were not interested and not connected to STEAM. And I decided, hey, what do girls six or 16 care about? Yes. Starts with a B, ends with a Y. It's beauty, though. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So that was a good segue to get exactly. pull the two together. Exactly. It's very smart. So why is it important to teach girls to like love their hair? Well, you know what? <laughs> Actually, you can be wearing the best outfit ever but if your hair's not done if your hair is right <laughs> did honey. it did it happen <laughs> yeah so a good hair day actually means empowerment confidence mm -hmm. the ability to walk into a room and own it but also to just show up and be authentic and the kids were struggling who i was working with and i knew hey we have to be able to love ourselves even if it is a bad hair day right <laughs> right that's a good point but so let's strive for a good hair day <laughs> strive for a good hair day what was your experience like growing up with curly hair oh well thank you for asking yeah. yes <laughs> the curly struggle was real and it was before a lot of what we see now is available uh -huh. i had probably three main products i used and um, i my mom did teach me how to do my curly hair but I did not enjoy it. And by fifth grade, it was time for me to do it myself. And unfortunately, on a particular picture day, I did my hair myself. And um, it, I realized I also had no friends because oh. who let me take a picture <laughs> like this? <laughs> and my hair had poofed and it just didn't look how I had left at the school, uh, left for school that day. Mm -hmm. And um, after that terrible picture day, I actually convinced my mom to get a relaxer. And um, unfortunately, I didn't know how to manage my hair in that state either. And I jumped in a pool full of chlorine after the Ooh. relaxer. So you learned the hard way. The very hard way and had a big chop before it was a big deal. So yeah, <laughs> I chopped all my hair off. And by high school, though, I was on a good journey to love myself with my curly hair, straighten it sometimes, but really had been able to grow from the terrible middle school experience. Yeah, I can imagine because our hair is our statement. Uh, like yes. Like our crown, it's our presence, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Tell me about the girls in the program. You know what? I love the girls who are participants. And from 6 to 16, I chose that age range because as young as 6, kids know what's good, that bad, young. pretty, six six. ugly, yeah. what's in. They'll tell us, right? Mm -hmm. And so I needed to be able to reach kids at that young age, but also support them throughout their journey to high school. And the girls in my program love to come. Mm -hmm. After the first session, their parents are running to me, Miss Curls, Miss Curls. They don't know my name, you know. <laughs> Miss Curls, I love it. <laughs> yeah, and they are saying, hey, you just had programming last week. 
my daughter won't let me straighten her hair now. Mm. So the, in a week, they're learning, hey, it's okay to rock your curly yes. hair. It's okay to not straighten it. And you're still beautiful how you are. And it, it's just refreshing to see the girls in, engage yes. in the activities that we have. I love that so much. Can you stick around for a little bit? Absolutely. All right, more with Annalise. When we return, we'll be right back. And we're back with Annalise Harris, founder of Curls on the Block. Okay, I can't wait to hear this. You have curly commandments to share with us. <laughs> I do, I do. Please take it away. Well, you know what? I realized I needed something to connect the girls with some basic hair care maintenance, and that was catchy. So I came up with the curly commandments, okay. and so it's an opportunity for us to connect with our curriculum, and they can take this information home and tell their parents <laughs> what they learned. The first is, thou shall sleep on a satin pillowcase. Oh, I love it! <laughs> now it's just sleep on the satin pillowcase. And you know, that actually helps retain moisture for our hair. That's what it does. Yes, the cotton actually causes friction and breaks off our hair fast. I will be changing my pillowcases? Okay. And, and you might sleep in a satin bonnet. Okay. So either one is good. Okay. Uh, thou shalt detangle thy hair in sections. And then um, there's another curly commandment that helps them with that sectioning off. But shampoo less. Oh. So shampoo less, but really as needed. So if you're putting a lot of product in your hair, you need to actually clarify and get it out before you reapply. So you can have good. some good curl days, right? Got it. <laughs> uh, number four, thou shall deep condition often. I'm a huge fan of DIY mm -hmm. or BUY. So you can buy it <laughs> or try it at home. Okay. So deep condition often and again, as necessary. So these are just quick curly commandments to help them just remember what they need to have in their curly toolkit, right? Okay. Um, thou shall try a head wrap. I think it's really important to try a head wrap because you know what? what? You may not have a good curl day. <laughs> okay. But you still need to be out in public and that's a really great way to have some confidence and cover up what you didn't get finished. Oh, so it's like, you know, adding some style with a head wrap. Ax absolutely, okay. absolutely. Got it. Thou shall comb from the ends towards the roots. The ends towards the roots. Yes, so section it off and then start from the bottom and go to the top. Uh, thou shall read the ingredients of any products used. The other one, thou shall wear bold accessories. You already okay. are fabulous. You got bold this curly Yes, you okay. got it. <laughs> and thou shall use little heat. Definitely that. Yes. And the last one is my favorite, and you do this all the time. Okay, what You did, did it do? for me when I walked in. Uh -huh. Thou shall compliment all awesome fros and curly girls when they slay. There it go, right there. <laughs> yes, because you are slaying. <laughs> You couldn't tell me nothing if I had that hair, honey. Okay, listen, thank you for all of those tips because we all gonna use that, right? Make sure you try to use it. I know I am. And well, we know you are expecting a baby girl soon, yes. so we couldn't let you leave without giving you a little J Hood swag. What? For your little baby. <laughs> oh my god. Your gosh. baby girl. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. Oh my god, congratulations. Since you spend so much time giving back to others, we want to give you a three-day, two-night stay at the Wyndham property for a, this is so cute, baby moon. I ain't never heard of a baby moon, but girl, oh you get gosh. a baby moon. Oh, wow. Before that baby I'm comes, I want you to enjoy it, kick up your feet, get your hair moisturized with your silk pillowcases oh and everything gosh. else. But thank you for joining us. This oh, is wow. amazing. Oh, wow. Thank you. I'm all emotional. <laughs> or it's, so, it's a happy place. Cry happy thank tears. Thank you. But thank you for oh being here. Gosh. All right, y'all. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.